Welcome to Willow Hill this morning. Our watchword for the week comes from John 17, 17. Jesus said, Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Isn't that wonderful this morning? If you would, let's all stand together in your Moravian hymnal. Let's turn to hymn number 145. We will sing together. Crown him with many crowns. 145. neighbor on your right and your left, tell them you love them this morning. And we've done kind of went through the welcome this morning. As far as announcements goes, the one thing I will make mention of this morning is June the 2nd. June the 2nd is going to be our graduation Sunday, and uh, there will be a uh, 
cookout afterwards, so uh, after service that day. So be planning on attending that, and we'll have a good time, and we can fellowship as long as we want to that day, as long as you're willing to stay here and not go to sleep on me anyway. But we'll have time to fellowship, and uh, that'll be a good day as well. And we'll get to celebrate our graduates that is, is coming up. So uh, please remember that. All right, if get a couple of ushers to come, we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings and be blessed by the choir. Father, what a blessing it is to be in your house. It's a blessing because this is time set aside for worship. And I, help you, I hope that you will help us to prepare for worship now. God, to be guided and directed by you, through you, and for you throughout this day. Grant us mercy and wisdom and help us to give, God, as you have chosen to give to us. In Jesus' name, amen.
you're seated this morning. Ladies, if you would come up front. All ladies. All ladies. All the single ladies. No. <laughs> Sorry, he just went in my head. Y'all started scaring me there for a minute. I, I was afraid we was getting confused. <laughs> Look at him trying. Well, I'm going to tell you, the pews thinned out a right smart, didn't they? Hallelujah for you ladies. We're thankful to you. And if you wasn't able to this morning, if you wasn't able to come to the meal, there is a potted plant on the front pew. It is a begonia. Pick out one, take it with you as you go. If we have leftovers, I'll ask you to take it to somebody else, especially some of our shut-ins. If you want to grab one and take it to a shut-in, we would love for you to do that. But, fellas, this is over half of our congregation right here. And uh, very thankful for who they are and what they do for us. We love each and every one, and... and I, I would ask you at some point before everybody gets to leave today to go by and, and talk to them and thank them and uh, wish them a happy Mother's Day. So we want to do that to you now. But go ahead and pick you out a plant and we'll let you sit back down for now. We may get you ladies just to kind of line up out the vestibule doors at the end of the service today if that's all right. Will y'all do that for me? And let everybody tell, tell you happy Mother's Day and they love you. They'd rather do that and shake my hand anyway. <laughs> All right, pick you out a flower and we'll let you be seated. We won't make no more mockery out of you or uh, whatever out of you. I don't know. What? <laughs> yeah, spectacle. I, that was the word I was meant. You want me? Come here. I'll take you. I'll take you. We'll come up here and preach together. Let me get you on this side, though, so you don't grab a microphone. That right. That right. Boy. She's all right. This makes me easier to look at. What is it? it looks different from up here, don't it? It looks different. Well, that's true. That's true. Look at them. See them all? Can you say hey? Say hey. Say hey. I told y'all she wanted to preach her. She's sitting down there reaching for me. So preacher ain't going to deny that. Uh, I, Amy said, you want me to hold her? I said, no, she makes me look a lot better sitting up here, standing up here. If you would this morning, if you're going to stand one more time. Kevin said, why'd you get everybody to sit down? <laughs> uh, Turn to the liturgy on page 67. It is the Ascension Liturgy. And we'll stand together and we will start our Ascension Liturgy. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. 
who is this King of glory? Lord strong and mighty, Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven in the heavens. And his kingdom rules over all. The Father of glory has raised Christ from the dead and made him to sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And you can be seated. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may be also. I ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Let me start over. O oh, most merciful Savior, as thou wast raised from the dead, we also walk in the of life. as thou didst ascend into heaven, we set our minds on the things of as thou sittest on the throne, may we be confident of the final triumph, as thou makest intercession for us. May As angels honor thee in heaven, may every tongue on earth confess thy name. Uh, and when we see the, thee face to face, sorry.
stand please. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect was tempted as we are, yet without sin. We Thus saith the Lord, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is a thirst, I will give of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Therefore, with angels and seated and be turning to the gospel of John chapter number three and before she goes out out I'm going to take her back to her mom and daddy until I started coming down the steps she was out <laughs> see I told y'all all she wanted was her preacher from the beginning And that may be the other way around. I mean, well, you have told me I was the best sleeping pill you've ever had, so <laughs> it works out well. Uh, with the now, I had her asleep, and y'all got a pincher. Oh me! This morning in the Gospel of John, chapter number three. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about Nicodemus and being born again, and one of the reasons that we're going to do that is because we've done the liturgy for ascension, and I have been uh, talking to some people this week, and in talking to some people this week, believe this or not, I have heard. I know who Jesus is, and as long as I know, that's enough. Well, I'm going to tell you, knowing in your mind is not enough. Knowing in your mind is not enough. You got to know in your heart, and you say, well, preacher, I'm pretty sure we here at Willow Hill know that. I'm sure that you've heard that a time or two. But there's people that watches our videos. There are people that are 
uh, sitting at home, and there may be some in here this morning that doesn't realize that there has to be a new birth. It's not about knowing who Jesus is. It's about knowing him in your heart. I know very little with my mind. Well, I'm surprised I didn't get an amen. Tell Bob I miss him so much. He would have given me an amen on that. I know very little up here, but I know the greatest gift of all right here. And that is something that is to be desired. That is something to be longed for. That is something, not only is it to be desired and to be longed for, that is something that every human being, male or female, has to make a decision about. It ain't about knowing the name of Jesus. It's not about knowing uh, just enough to say, yes, I believe he is a Savior. And most of the time when you talk to somebody like that, that is exactly what they will say. I believe he is a Savior. When I talk about my Jesus, he is not a Savior. He is my Savior. If you know him here, he's an a Savior. If you know him here, he's my Savior. You say, well, why has this hit you? And one of the reasons that this has hit me a little harder maybe this week, uh, not only, we, we kind of talked about it a little bit on Wednesday night uh, in the youth Bible study, in the Crossroads, uh, Willow Hill Crossroads Bible study, but it was amazing. The very next day I was talking to a fella that's been a church, been in church a long time. And uh, he said, I know him. I know he's a Savior. And I said, there's a difference between a Savior and my Savior. Do you know that? He looked at me and he, he said, what are you talking about? That's just a play on words. It's not a play on words. Before Amy and I got married, she was a girl. She was a woman, and just if I might say so myself, she was a beauty. But today, hey, every time I can, brother, every time I can. <laughs> but today, she's my girl. She's my wife. She's my beauty. Because God has put us together. When God comes in, it changes things. And well, that's just still a word. That's not what he told Nicodemus. When Nicodemus came to him in verse number 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi. And I want you to notice here as he said, Rabbi, he was giving him a term of respect. He was giving him a term of endearment. He knew that he was a great teacher. Even the Pharisees knew these things. But the Pharisees are the same ones that took him unto Pilate to have him crucified. But he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot... I want to repeat that. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And of course, Nicodemus in verse 4 saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of, of, of uh, water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus answered and said, How can these things be? And Jesus said to him, Art thou a master of Israel, and know not these things? 
He said, we speak, verily, ver, uh, verse 11, verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and receive not our witness. If I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe me if I tell you heavenly things? And no man ascendeth up to the heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten of the Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Let us pray. Father, blessed are we to have your word, to be able to see it, to be able to hear it, and Heavenly Father, God, we need your direction and understanding always. That we not hear with our ears and believe with our mind. But God, that it is embedded in our heart to grow into a relationship with thee. Preach to us this morning the words we need to hear. The comfort that we need to have. The love we need to show. And the grace. Lord, that grace that we need to give to others. We're thankful for you this morning. And it's through your Son and his blood we pray. Amen. As Nicodemus came, I know I'm not telling you anything that you haven't heard before. I hope that this way we understand it, maybe in a, just a little different light, the fact that when Jesus tells Nicodemus, except a man be born again, and matter of fact, before he made that statement, what did he say? He said, verily, verily, which means this is very, very important. Why is this so important? I want you to understand this morning that there is no way under the sun, no way under the sun, that a man gets to heaven, a woman gets to heaven without Jesus Christ. It is impossible. The Bible clearly tells us over in John chapter 10 that anybody that tries to get in in any other way is a thief and a robber. Well, preacher, now you're pointing your fingers at, at some of us now. I ain't pointing my finger at anybody. If you feel a finger pointing at you, it may be the convicting power of God telling you that hey that's me that's you that's there's no way we can get in except a man be born again how can a man be born when he's old he had to explain explain that to a Pharisee one of the biblical scholars of the day the one that everybody went to for religious advice they went to him not only for religious advice, they went to him for forgiveness. They went to him and told him their deepest, darkest things in their life. And they handed him a, a, a dove or a pigeon or a lamb or, or some kind of thing, animal to be slaughtered, to give over and to be sacrificed for the sin that was in their life. But Jesus made that much easier for us, didn't he? When Jesus came and he accepted the cross and he endured the shame with joy, without opening his mouth, there's no more sacrifice for the sin. We had the one perfect lamb that came that was a sacrifice for all. And he said, he says, he tells us, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, 6. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Yet we have 
live in a world and we stand in a world today that people are saying there's other ways in. They're preaching the fact that you can be a thief and a robber and get in. Let me tell you, they're preaching lies. They're preaching false doctrine. They're teaching false doctrine. There is no other way to get in. You say, well, preacher, this ain't much of a Mother's Day sermon. Every day's a God day for me, and it is for you too. I know. When I learn how to respect God, I learn how to treat others better. When I learn how to respect Him and respect His Word, I know how to treat other people even better. I'm here to tell you that this morning when the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That is exactly what Jesus said, so that's exactly what he means. And do you remember when they pierced his side while he was on the cross, what happened? Water and blood come out. Through the water and the blood of Jesus Christ, we have cleansing for the redemption of sin we're cleansed by his righteousness but some people don't understand that we read on down just a little bit and it says well in verse number six that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit let me ask you this this morning and you don't have to answer out loud but who is Jesus? Where is he now? There's some people that say he's never been born on this earth. The Messiah has never come. There's some people that say that. There's some people said that Jesus came and he lived on the earth and he was a good man. But he missed his calling. There is some that says that Jesus came to the earth. He was the sacrifice for all mankind. He was the lamb that was slain. He fulfilled his purpose and he ascended to the right hand of the Father. And there's some says, we'll wait and see. Let's just wait and see. I'm one of the biggest procrastinators you'll ever meet. But the wait and see game on this was not, didn't work for me. The wait and see game didn't work for me. You want to know why the wait and see game didn't work for me? Because I'm always late. I'm always a little behind. I'm always doing things and having to get caught up. I said, boy, this is one area of my life I don't want to play that game with. Because when the trumpet sounds and the church is called out, it's too late. We can't be on Kenny's time or anybody else's time. We've got to be on the Lord's time. When he says we've got to be born again and we've got to be born by the water and the Spirit, that means that we have got to be born into Jesus Christ and that we can take on his righteousness, cleansed and washed whiter than snow by the blood of the Lamb, and that we have an eternal place to go to. Boy, isn't it wonderful? We can sit here and put a big old smile on our face when we think about that, that kingdom of God that John describes in Revelation when he said, I saw a new heaven and a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Oh, the walls of jasper and the gates of pearl and the street of pure gold. We can think about that and we can put a big old smile on our face and like, I can't wait. But I, will, I go back and I think about Saul. Remember Saul? We talked about Saul last week. <coughs> wasn't it? No, it wasn't last week we talked about Saul. Two weeks ago we talked about Saul. Saul on the road to Damascus. And this bright light shines and he hears this voice and that voice says to him, Saul, Saul. Why kickest thou against the pricks? He didn't see nobody, but the glory of God shined so bright that the men was with him. They dropped to the ground. They couldn't stand to look upon the light. John got blinded by that light and was given direction. How wonderful. How wonderful would that be? We have to be born again. We have to be born by water in the Spirit. The question that I asked a while ago, where is Jesus now? He has ascended to the right hand of the Father. But do you think that he is in his fleshly form or in his spiritual form? I happen to believe he is in his spir excuse me, spiritual form. 
And it's only by His Spirit that we can live in this life. This flesh tears us down. This flesh wants things of the world. This flesh wants the satisfaction that the world has to offer. We don't need the satisfaction of this world. We need the satisfaction and the, the, the care of the spiritual side of things. Yes, there are times that we do need the fleshly healing. And we can pray for those things. But we got to remember, we got to be born of the flesh. Of, uh, sorry, born of the water and the spirit, not of the flesh. Which means that flesh has to die, which means we have got to lay down this life, which means we've got to take up our cross daily and what? Deny ourselves. Myself, myself is lazy. My flesh is lazy. My flesh is. My flesh says, lay in the bed all day and do nothing. My flesh says, do this and you'll feel better. My flesh says, go enjoy some of this. It won't matter. Ain't nobody looking. My flesh tempts me all the time. And you know who else is the tempter? Who is the master of that? That is Satan himself, right? Satan tempts us sore. He tempts us to do wrong things. The flesh says, whoo, boy, that sounds like fun. Let's go do that. But I'm so glad that the Spirit, once we are born again, God said, or Jesus said, He would send a comforter to us, and that comforter is truth that lives inside of us. When the Holy Ghost fills us up, the Holy Ghost goes against the, the flesh and says, you know you don't need that. You know you can't handle that. I'm here to tell you that if the Spirit hadn't told me on several occasions that I was not smart enough to handle myself in these situations, stay out of there, I'd probably be in a whole lot worse shape than, I'm, than I am. But praise God, I had that spirit. I had the Holy Ghost that lived inside of me. He said, don't marvel that I said to be born again. He said, don't marvel at that. Marvel at the fact that you can be cleansed from your sin. And that you will have a place, your name written in the Lamb's book of life. you got a place in glory where Jesus says over in John 14, He said, I will go to my Father's house and build many mansions. Many rooms will it have. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's the Jesus that we love, right? That's the Jesus that we cherish. But you can't know Him as a Savior. He's got to be your Savior. A Savior. A Savior means you don't know Him on a personal level. My Savior means that's personal. He has touched my heart. How about you? Has he touched yours? We read on down and we read the fact that, uh, that uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that's good. That's a great verse, is it not? I quote it a lot. But what about John 3.17? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. It ain't that we're trying to condemn the world. We're trying to show them what is right. But that the world through him might be saved. Why do we need to tell people about Jesus? Because they don't know and they don't understand. They've heard his name and they said, oh yeah, that Jesus, I, I know, I've, I've heard him read about. He's in the Bible, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. Have you ever been born again? What do you mean born again? And you got to go through this conversation. It's our job. It's our responsibility. And I can't think of anybody that illustrates the love that God has for his people than a mother that loves her family. There's my tie into Mother's Day. You say, well, you're comparing the moms to God? I absolutely am. Because it doesn't seem like it matters. What goes on? A mom can love through any situation. 
Doesn't mean she doesn't get aggravated. Doesn't mean that she doesn't get upset every now and again. But a mom always loves. And a mom always does. Even when she's mad and aggravated and frustrated, I'm here to tell you when the kids gets me mad, aggravated, and frustrated, and they can try to talk to them, I don't even want to speak to them. Matter of fact, well, Daddy, could you do it? Heck no, I ain't doing that. You don't do a thing for me, so I ain't doing nothing for you. I'm kind of rough on my youngins from time to time. Sometimes not rough enough. But Mama never says a word. She just goes and does. Isn't it wonderful that our God says, Boy, I know you fight me. I know in times in my life he has said, Kenny, you're fighting me. You're fighting me tooth and nail. You're making this so hard, but I'm going to help you, and I'm going I'm to clear this path for you. Why? Because he knows. He knows me. Why does he know me? He knows me because I've been covered by the water and the Spirit. I've been covered by the blood of Jesus. He looks past my inadequacies, and gives us grace, shows us mercy. Isn't it wonderful to see the working hand of God throughout? But if you really want to see a working hand of God, rem remember some of the things. Some of, you, uh, some of you will tell me a story here in a little bit. Well, my mom would come after me with a fly swat or a switch or a this or a that. Boy, there's been times in my life that I wish God had switched me and just told me than the way he had to show me because that was a whole lot rougher. The switching heals. But those things that you realize that you've done that you should have never done, that takes a lot longer to heal than the, the stripes from the switching. God loves you today, folks. He chose you. He came to you and knocked on your heart's door. And if you answered, hallelujah, I hope you tell everybody if they say to you or ask you, do you know Jesus? Yes, that's my Jesus. He lives inside of me. Or I hope you don't say, Jesus is a Savior. Because that's what the church has taught people to say in if you say that, you're okay. No, you're not. If he's not my Savior, if it's not personal, it's not okay. And you'll not make it in. So if you want to make it in, follow him. Be led by him. And we're going to close with the hymn on 429. So let's stand together and sing, He leadeth me. Let him lead you to that new birth, 429.
Ladies, if you would, line up both sides of the vestibule. You'll probably have to get on out the doors just a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, look out uh, for a coon running around here. It was running around a few minutes ago, so y'all watch out for that. But ladies, if we could get y'all to line up by both sides of the vestibule back there, we'll give you just a second, and then we will uh, pray and be dismissed. You don't have to carry. You can come back in and get your flower. Yeah. All right, while the ladies are finishing going out, folks, thank you again for such a wonderful day. Thank you, mothers, for everything. And we will be dismissed with a word of prayer. God, may your blessings be upon all of us. May your countenance shine down from heaven and be a gift of glory. And may we know that born-again feeling and presence and grace with you. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.